Hello everyone, in today's video I'll be showing you how to create a batch processing script for After Effects using ExtendScript. Now this is what we're going to be creating today. It's a simple little batch processor here with four different functions. The first of which will change all compositions beginning time codes to zero seconds. The second one will change every text layer in a selected comp to some predefined values. Predefined values being a predefined font, fill color, stroke color, and font size. The third function will apply a predefined effect to every layer in a selected comp, which right now we have set up to the black and white effect. And finally, we have a scalar, which will multiply the scale of every layer in the selected comp by a predefined percentage. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. We've got this comp here and several other comps that don't start at zero. This one starts at 300 frames or 12 seconds. This one starts at 14 hours. So we'll go ahead and apply our first function. And you can see it completed successfully. And now all of our comps have a start time code of zero. Now we have a text layer that is kind of hard to read. And say we had a hundred of these in a layer and we didn't want to go through and change each of them. This would be super useful. We just click on texter, completed successfully. And we've changed it to our predefined values, which in this case is a font size of 68, a white fill and times new Roman. Now we'll move over to this comp to take a look at the effects and scalar options. If we click on effects, it says completed successfully. And now if we go into our effect controls and select each one of our layers, you can see there has been a black and white effect applied to each of them. And if we click on scalar, completed successfully, we've now scaled our layers up 110%. So let's go ahead and get started in creating this useful script that can help save you a ton of time on bigger projects. So I'll go ahead and snap this over to here so I can have them side by side and we can look at the code as well as work on the UI inside of After Effects and Extend Script. Before I begin, I should probably mention the channel name change from Peregrine Commando 99 to NT Productions. Well, when I set up my YouTube in 2009, I kind of just thought it was for fun and I put in a random name. So now that it's been a while and I want to be a bit more professional, I've changed it to NT Productions. But hopefully that clears up any confusion you had if you saw that the channel name changed. Although I haven't been posting videos as often, they will now be coming out weekly every Wednesday. So this script is less than 80 lines or so of code, so let's get started by creating a new JavaScript file inside of ExtendScript. So to start off, we're going to want to set up our project and comp variables. So I'll just make a variable called project, and this is equal to the application.project. And that will just reference the project that we currently have open, whether it's saved or not. We'll also set up a comp variable that will go to our project and select the active item, which will be the selected comp in this case. So one thing to note is say that you have a bunch of different layers with text. You'll want to click on each one of them individually, run the script, then go to the next one and click on it, run the script, because when the script initializes, it sets the current active item to the comp variable. Of course, you could code this to change as you change the compositions, but we won't get into that in this tutorial. So next up, we'll want to set up our predefined values. This will be everything from text color to text size to effect names and scale percentages. So the different variables I'm going to use are font size, fill color, stroke color, font, the effect match name, and the scale percent. So for the font size, I'm just gonna set it to whatever After Effects usually has for me, which is 68. The fill color, we're going to make an array because we need to have an R, G, and a B value inside of it. So I'll make the fill color completely white by putting in 111. And same thing with the stroke color, it will take RGB, so we're going to put in values for that. And we'll make it black by putting 000. The font will take a sort of font match name similar to the effect match names in After Effects. I'll link to a list of all the fonts and effect match names in the description. But if we want, say for example, Times New Roman, we'll just put in Times New Roman PSMT. For the effect match name, we're just going to use a black and white effect, so Adobe black and white. And the scale percentage is the value your original scale of each layer is going to be multiplied by to give you the new scale. So let's go ahead and put in 1.5 to make a more noticeable scale difference. So if you had a layer with scale 100, it would then turn into 150. Now we can go ahead and create our UI. 
To start off, we'll always want to make a window. So we'll just call it main window and we'll create a new window out of that. And this takes usually three arguments. The first of which is the type of window, which palette usually just works fine. The second is the name. And the third is any X and Y values, but we'll go ahead and put this as undefined. So as we create elements in the future, it will go ahead and automatically scale the window properly. We're also going to want to set up the orientation of the main window by doing main window dot orientation. And we're going to set this to column. So that way every group we add within the window will go from top to bottom. And what we're going to do is make each group go from left to right. So this just allows us to really organize our UI. So now we can start creating our groups and thus our buttons. So we'll first create a group called group one. To do this, we'll just go ahead and go to main window and we're going to be adding a group with undefined values there. And we'll just call it group one. And we're also going to want to set the orientation to row. Now we can add our two buttons in the first group. The first of which is the time button. So we'll create a time button variable and this is going to be group one and we're going to be adding a button again undefined values there and we'll just call it t0 because it's changing the time codes to zero we'll also create our second button in here which will be our text button and this is going to be inside of group one and again we're adding a button with undefined values and we'll just call it text tool now, if we want to actually preview this, it's not going to work right now because we have to initialize the main window. To do this, I'm going to start off by calling the main window and we're going to center it first. So when we run it, it doesn't appear in the value 00, which is up in the corner here. And sometimes you can't even move it around if it spawns there. So then after that, I'm going to go ahead and show. So if we go ahead and run this, make sure we're in the version of After Effects we have open here, play it. You can see we now have our window with our first group and two buttons. You may have noticed when I showed off this in the beginning, whenever I highlighted a button, it would give you some information about what it does. So let's go ahead and put in those values. To do that, we're going to call our button here, time button, and there's a thing called help tip, and this will display any string that we put in here. So let's just go ahead and define what this does. So whenever you highlight the time button, it's going to say, sets beginning time code of every comp to zero. And same thing for the text button, we'll add a help tip. And for this we'll say sets every text layer in the selected comp to predefined values. All right, so now when we run it, if we highlight over one of these, we're gonna get our help tip. So now let's go ahead and create our second group, which has our final two buttons. We'll just call it group two, and it's gonna be inside the main window. And again, we're adding a group, undefined, and we'll call it group two. And just like before, we're going to want to set the orientation to row. And now let's go ahead and add our other two buttons, the first of which is our effects button. And this will be added to group two, and we're adding a button undefined and we'll call it effects go ahead and add our help tip here which will say adds and then we're actually going to put in our variable for effect match name here so they can see what it's going to apply so it adds that to every layer in the selected comp now let's go ahead and add our final button which is our scale button and again, this is group two, we're adding a button undefined, and we'll just call this scale tool. And of course, we'll add in our help tip, which will just be multiplies the scale of every layer in the selected comp by, and we'll put in our scale percent. So now when we run it, we've got all of our buttons and all of our tool tips working properly. So now we just need to set up the functionality of the script and basically the meat. So, come on down to this meat where friends meet to eat meat. so the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and add our functionality again. We'll start off with our first button, which is our time button. And whenever we click it, so on click, we're going to initialize this set of code in this function. We'll start off with an app.begin undo group. 
which will basically make it easier for the user to undo any changes that they make. So if there's a ton of text layers and they don't wanna to have to hit Control Z a hundred times, this will make it easy. So we can also pass through an argument through the begin undo group that says what the undo group does. We'll just go ahead and say comp time codes to zero. We'll also want to close the undo group by doing app.end undo group, and we don't need to pass any arguments through there. So now we're going to set up a for loop so we can go through each composition in the items and make their time code zero. So we'll make a for loop. We'll just do var i equals one, and for i is less than or equal to our project and the number of items in it. Go ahead and increment i, and now for each one of the times it goes through this, we need to check if it's a composition. So we'll put in an if statement, and this is going to check whether or not the current item that it goes through, these right here, is a composition. So we'll say if project.item i is an instance of a comp item, execute whatever code's inside of here. So it's actually just one line of code we need to set the time code to zero. All we have to do is grab the current item, which will be project.item i, and again, we just checked if it was a comp item. So if it is, it's going to execute this code. We'll set the display start time to zero. Simple as that. And I'll go ahead and add an alert after it's done all this so that we can make sure it's gone through properly. Just say completed successfully. And now we can move on to our next button. Our next button in this case is our text button. So we'll call that. And again, whenever we click it, go ahead and go through this function here. Just like last time, we're going to make a beginning and end undo group here. Just call it change all text layers and go ahead and end the undo group. So now within this code, just like before, we're going to set up a for loop. This time I'm just gonna use a different variable for fun. We'll set e equal to one and as e is less than or equal to our current composition we selected dot number of layers, which in this case, if you look at this comp here, it'd be one, this one would be two. We'll increment E, and we need to now check if the current selected layer is a text layer. To do this, we're going to put in an if statement, and we're going to say if comp.layer E is instance of a text layer, so that will check if the current layer is a text layer, and if it is, we want to go ahead and apply this code inside of here. So in the scripting guide on about page 182 for the CS6 one, we have all of this here, which helps us figure out how we can apply different types of text options to a text layer. We need to start off by creating a variable called text prop or something like that. And this is going to be equal to our current layer. So comp.layer E and its property called source text. And inside of After Effects, if you go to a text layer, bring it down to text here, you can see this is our source text, which contains all of our text information like font size, stroke, colors, and font. So then we're going to want to set up a variable called text document or something of that sort. And this is going to be equal to our text property and its value. And now we can go ahead and set all of our text properties that we predefined up here. So we'll go ahead and start off with the text document's font size. So text document dot font size. And we'll set this equal to our variable up top called font size, which is set to 68. Then we'll go ahead and put in our fill color. Set that equal to fill color up there, which is an array. We'll also do our stroke color here. And of course our font, so text document dot font equals font, which will refer to Times New Roman up here. And finally, to set up all these values, we're going to put in text prop dot set value, and we'll set the text prop value to text document. And again, after this whole thing is finished, I'm going to send out an alert to say it did it successfully. So I'll just say text changed successfully. All right, now let's move on to our third button. Our third button is our effects button. And whenever we click on it, I'm going to initialize this function here. Start off with an app.begin undo group. And we'll just say apply effects to layers. And we'll go ahead and undo the group. All right, and just like before, we're going to want to go ahead and put in a for loop. And since we're applying effects to layers, 
we're going to want to get the number of layers again. So I'll just say var q equals one, where q is less than or equal to comp.num layers, the number of layers in a composition, increment q plus one. And this one is super simple too, just a one line of code to get the effect applied. We're going to grab the current layer selected or comp layer q, and we're going to access the effects and we're going to add a property or add an effect in this case. And we need to put in the effect match name, which we have predefined up here as effect match name. We'll just paste that in there and that will apply black and white to every layer recognized in the selected comp. Again, I'll add an alert at the end to make sure it's functioning. And now we can move on to our last function. Our last button is our scale button. So again, we'll call that and we'll say on click equals function and we'll set up our begin and end undo groups and app.undo group. And again, just like usual, we're going to want to set up a for loop so we can access the number of layers in the composition that we need to apply this scaling to. So we'll just set up another variable here, var r equals one for r is less than or equal to comp.number of layers, increment r plus one. And inside of here, we're going to set up a new variable called current scale or cur scale. And this is going to be equal to our current layer selected, so comp.layerR. And we're going to want to access the property called scale and get its value. And then we're going to want to set up a variable called new scale, which is going to be our calculated scale after we've applied our multiplier. So we'll set this equal to cur scale times our scale percent that we predefined up here. And then finally, to set the new scale on our layer, we'll grab our layer, comp.layer r, and we're going to access the property called scale again, and we're going to set its value to new scale. So it's going to grab the original scale from our layer, then it's going to make a variable that is equal to our original scale times our scale percent that we predefined, and then it's going to set the scale value to our new scale. So to finish it off, we'll just add our alert, and now our code is pretty much done. Of course, there isn't any validation or bug testing done in this script, so you will find problems when trying to change the scale of, say, a camera, or applying effects to layers that don't accept effects, such as cameras or null objects. So there are a few buggy things inside of it, but let's go ahead and see if it works. So I've gone ahead and reloaded the project, and I will select this first composition that has the text, and I'll go ahead and run the script. So now you can see our time codes are not at zero. We'll click on the time code zero button and it completed successfully. We now have all the time codes at zero. Let's also go ahead and change our text by using the text tool. And it looks like we're getting an error here. I think I know what the problem is. We need to get rid of these brackets. Let's run it again. Use the text tool. Text changed successfully. And now we've changed it to Times New Roman, 68 font size, and white text. Now again, like I said, this is kind of not a fully tested script. It hasn't been bug tested or validated. So if we try to apply the effects to all of the layers in this composition, it's not gonna work because we have this camera here. So we'll go ahead and close the script and we'll load up a composition that doesn't have any types of layers that don't accept effects or scale changes. So like this one and I'll rerun the script, so that way it changes the active comp to this one. And I'll start off by applying my effects. So now it's all black and white. We have black and white applied to all of the layers. And now we can also scale them up 150%, which in this case doesn't look too great, but the concept is there. But yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. All of the links for the code will be in the description below, including the match names for all the effects and after effects, and a bunch of the match names for fonts. But of course, make sure you subscribe for weekly videos coming out every Wednesday. Most of them will be tutorials. Occasionally there'll be other content like a music video or something like that. But I'm definitely getting back into YouTube so that you guys can enjoy more tutorials and there's not really a lot of scripting tutorials out there. But again, thanks for watching guys. That's how you create a batch processing script for After Effects that has a lot of functionality and can save you a lot of time.